Well, sometimes there's just a super cool car that slips through your hands because you can't act as fast as you need to. This 1981 Pontiac Phoenix LJ with a four-speed manual transmission was posted on Facebook in the classic GM Front Wheel Drive Society, and I happened upon it maybe a couple hours after it had been posted, along with the owner's contact information. It was actually for sale by a mechanic shop, I believe. And I called the owner, and as I called the owner, he was already on the phone with somebody else who was about to be the new owner of it. It just beat me to it by a few minutes. And it's a shame because this is an example of what you find on Facebook Marketplace sometimes, but you have to move fast. This was a 30,000-mile car and just a super unique X car. Again, it's a Pontiac Phoenix, which is rare. It's the notchback. It's an LJ, which is rare, and it's a four-speed manual transmission. What was interesting about it was that the owner really didn't have too much information. I believe that a friend dropped it off for him to sell, and somebody bought it really not even knowing what engine it has definitively because I asked the owner, and he thought it was the four-cylinder but wasn't quite sure. I guess it didn't matter to the would-be buyer. The car looked cool enough, and I can honestly understand why. It was also for sale he was asking thirty nine ninety five for it, and my guess is he settled for a little bit less. But I heard his phone was just blowing up continuously with people wanting this, and you'll see why here. Here's one exterior photo of the car, and first thing is it's a great color. It's black, which is a rare color for these X cars, and it even has the bug deflector, which is pretty humorous, on the front of the car. But it does have snowflake wheels, which are just a wonderful Pontiac trademark and look great on this car as well. No vinyl roof, which is a big plus. Let's take a look at the back. So here we are, the rear three-quarter view that the owner posted, and just a handsome rear three-quarter view. You can tell this car has been well-loved. It still has the dealer sticker on the deck lid. And I love those taillights on this Phoenix. Just gives the car kind of a mysterious stealth look with it being painted black. And you can see here the interior peeking through the glass it's red i'll show you that in a minute but overall i think these x cars are really handsome especially by today's standards yes gm design overused that trademark 76 to 79 seville very vertical rear pillar but it just works on this car and it also gives the trunk some good volume as opposed to modern day trunks which on cars really don't have much space but let's take a look at the inside. Let's take a look at the inside now, and this is where this car really shines. You can see the LJ interior, which was the luxury version of the Pontiac Phoenix, has these beautiful semi-bucket seats. Those actually are not buckets. You can see it's a bench seat, which was typical for the X cars at the time, but in the shape of buckets. And Pontiac during this era, if they didn't do let's say, everything well. One thing they did do well is have attractive seating, and I would say much more so than other GM divisions. Everything in the Firebirds, from the Viscount bucket seats to these seats to using those Viscount buckets in the Pontiac 6000, Pontiac really had it going on the interiors during this time period. And you can also see this car has the custom luxury cushion wheel, which came with the LJ trim, and was materially different from the standard car. And you can see a few other features poking through in this picture. One is the four-speed manual transmission lever and the clutch pedal, which was rare for this. Obviously, the car also has a tilt steering wheel. But you can also see this car has a CB radio in it, which is super cool and certainly something that was popular after the Smokey and the Bandit films, kind of an early form of radar detectors because you would talk with others around you and say that there were police up ahead. It came in quite handy. I used to have a 79 Cadillac Seville diesel that had a factory CB radio, and I also had a 78 Eldorado Beer Ritz that had a factory CB radio, and I just loved it. This was in the days before there was ways or other things that told you where the police were waiting, so it was quite handy. And here in this photo, you can better see the four-speed manual transmission these did have a reverse that you had to engage by pushing down on the gear shift as opposed to just crashing through an area that had a bit more resistance. That worked just fine. 
Although these X cars did have issues with the parking brake release that would sometimes pull through the dashboard, particularly on the citations. Yes, they didn't have the best quality in the first couple of years. That is definitely true. But they did have a number of charm points, including the packaging in these cars, which was just excellent for the era. They're so roomy and spacious for their size, and the seats are comfortable. You can also see the CB radio here and some of the HVAC controls. This car did have air conditioning. Here's a better picture of the dash. You can see this car did have the full gauge package with the engine temperature gauge at the left, the oil pressure gauge, then the voltmeter, then the clock. I thought this was always kind of an interesting design that Pontiac had with all the gauges in the middle aside from the speedometer and fuel gauge, which were in the main instrument cluster. And Pontiac was into this modular dashboard theme. You can see those different gauges in the air vents appear to be held in with Torx head screws. This was something that was a theme across the 82 Firebird, as well as even the Fiero. Pontiac was big into this interior theme with modular pods, and it kind of carried over into almost every vehicle that they had. It did look good. It just, you had to be careful in some cases if you serviced these vehicles because some of those screws were real and some were fake and you had to know which ones were real and which ones were fake otherwise you were going to strip out a fake screw head and then your car was going to look a bit funny but i think this is a quite attractive dash it certainly has a lot of vents so one of the things that these x cars did have is good air conditioning and good heat um, the air conditioning compressor in the early years was the gm rotary compressor which was okay not as good as the old A6 compressor. And I don't believe as good as some of the subsequent compressors. But the air was still quite cold and the heat was very warm and toasty on cold days. You can also notice that on the interior, just near the door sill plates below the door, that there's a couple of plastic trim pieces. I always thought this was interesting that they have some fake stitching molded into the plastic. No idea why they did that, but... Some other GMX cars also did that, and I, I just found it rather humorous. And here's one of the gauges. You can see this car had 32,000 original miles, has the trip odometer and the tachometer. And I'm pretty sure this car was a four-cylinder because you can tell it has the 5,000 RPM red line, which likely means it's the Iron Duke four-cylinder underhood, making about 90 horsepower. The V6 used to have, I believe, a bit higher red line. And if you had one of these Iron Duke equipped cars, there really was no reason to rev it beyond about 4,000 RPM because it just really made no more power. The power started dying off at that point. Those engines were quite torquey and they had good throttle response. I'm guessing I've never driven one with a manual transmission. I bet the throttle response was actually pretty good in a light car like this with a four-speed manual. But alas, I missed out on the opportunity to own this car, unfortunately, so I guess I will never know how it drives. I do find it funny that somebody picked this car up even faster than I did because, as I said, the owner really didn't have too many details about it. So somebody was just going on the pictures and bought it sight unseen and uh, took it away. So that's kind of how you have to act when you see one of these on Facebook Marketplace that was at a good price. As I mentioned, this car... When I called the uh, seller, it was priced at thirty nine ninety five. My guess is he settled for thirty five hundred and called it a day. But would have been a fun little car for thirty five hundred dollars. You do have to watch out on these early X bodies for a number of things. I'm a bit wary about them just because I know the issues that they have. I don't feel like rebuilding the computer carburetor on these four cylinders in nineteen eighty two. The Iron Duke would get fuel injection, which was much better. The Rochester throttle body setup is just excellent. Very durable, easy to fix. The carburetor on these kind of stinks, to be honest. And also, these cars tended to have what was called morning sickness, which meant that when you turned the steering back and forth, it was a bit hard to turn. And the only remedy for that is to replace the power steering rack. They were so often defective back in the day that it was hard to keep replacement power steering racks in stock. And with a low mileage car like this, it could be the case that it was never replaced. And that's a big, big job, not an easy job. Of course, they did have some braking issues early on. And a year or so after this, those were pretty much solved. But they were still a bit tail happy in the rear if you jammed on the brakes. 
Nonetheless, a cool car, and again, found on Facebook Marketplace. That's where I find a lot of my vehicles, but you have to move fast if you see something cool like this. And I will say, at least in my opinion, this is one cool X car. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.